I'd like to ask about uh, New York generally, architecture-wise, design-wise, development, mm -hmm. um, and also a little bit specifically about uh, the fifth facade it's being called, or right. roof space. Um, let's start with New York. Why? Well, first of all, do you feel like there's a, a tension between um, modern buildings that are defining New York's skyline today? We're seeing a lot of activity. Right. Um, and uh, the, the classic New York buildings that, that everyone uh, associates with the city and, and appreciates pretty uni universally, the Empire State Building, Chrysler Building, what have you. Do you see there being uh, a backlash against modern buildings changing the skyline? And, and what should architects and developers do, if anything, to respond to that? I think it depends on which buildings, right? Some buildings are remarkably well received, even though they don't fit a model of that classic romantic setback skyscraper. I mean, we all have a, a strong emotional reaction to some of the great setback skyscrapers, which were really created post-1916 zoning. Um, they have these incredibly beautiful forms to them, a series of setbacks. So sometimes we design buildings like that, and sometimes there's new buildings like the like Bjarke Engel's building on 57th Street that's been really well received that doesn't fit any kind of normal patterns of development. So I think it really depends. Um, New York is uh, like, New Yorkers are, are uh, well-educated sports fans, very critical, and they're pretty well-educated architecture fans too, and pretty critical. So I think the right buildings come along, people fall in love with them. Hmm. Are there any common elements that you think make it easy for a building to be received as a, a a good addition to the New York skyline? Well, I think all, all these things say something about your beliefs. You, you make something and you say, this is what we believe has value. So if it's clearly about just harvesting square footage for a commodity to sell or to trade, New Yorkers get that right away and it, it doesn't seem to enrich their life. But then again, you can do a building that's of uh, earthy texture, very simple, deep masonry punctures, and the reaction is, I like that building, I love that building, it feels right. So uh, there's an emotional response that people have when they see that somebody crafted a solution about something, that it had some meaning, some purpose beyond just harvesting square footage for a revenue return. Hmm. Incredibly apt observation, given the theme of this conference, which is global exchange of capital, right? right? Which right. is what's driving yep. a lot of this new development. Um, expand on that a little bit. How you see that changing New York and, and cities around the world, really, as they are increasingly pressured to uh, harvest this equation, sort of, as you put it. Well, we have a... We have a growing concern about income inequality in New York. And uh, a lot of that is around the cost of housing. So under the current administration, there is a tremendous focus on creating affordable housing. So that long term, we'll be planning for some kind of equitable society. We believe in diversity, that diversity is a strength, and building projects that have affordable housing, have market right housing, a mix of all of those, planning for education. Um, that's how you make healthy, vibrant, diverse cities. You, you must have diversity. Um, on the on the overseas capital, New York's a great city. It's one of the great cities on earth. Uh, the political climate and financial climate seems to be quite stable here. So it's a very good place for someone to own real estate. It's viewed as a very safe place to own real estate. And that's, that's added to uh, pressure on the New York City real estate market, the residential side. Is there something that should be done to respond to that? Is New York just open for business and that and that's good are, are we the yeah, critical, it's great we're a trading we're a trading culture it's awesome it's fantastic um we need to take care of business at home we need to make sure that we have healthy parks good schools and uh affordable housing options that's our obligation but we're open trading where everyone's welcome in new york it's a great place very few of us were born here and grew up here we come here because it's an amazing place hmm. and do you think we'll continue to have that reputation and ability to attract people from all corners of the globe, of all types of people. I can tell you that I pray for it. <laughs> Why do you pray for it and not, <laughs> because, not say you're confident uh, it will Because my whole, uh, my whole career in some ways is dependent on it. I, I, I've mm -hmm. fallen in love with this place. I've invested my life here. And, uh, and its success is, 
is incredibly important to our studio and my family. And so, uh, and I think it'd be good for the world for New York to continue to be a free, open, inclusive, and welcoming city. And do you worry that it will not be? Uh, of course, reason? of course. I, uh, I, worry about, I worry about many things. Um, well, one, what one makes of you which, worry that it will not be open and inclusive? Um, I, I, think it's, I think it would be wrong for New Yorkers to push back against foreign investment in our city. I think it's always been a place, I mean, from 1609, uh, it's been foreigners coming here and investing their mm -hmm. energies and their resources, and that's made it the place that it is. I, I, I can't imagine that it would make any, any intellectual sense at all to all of a sudden say that we're no longer going to be open and welcoming for people who want to invest their talents, energies, and resources here. Mm. So I wanted to ask about the so-called fifth facade, yeah. roof, roof spaces, um, outdoor spaces, uh, new integrations of public space throughout yes. buildings. What are some trends on that um, front that excite you, that interest you? Well, for me, there's a, a term that we call uh, biophilic design or biophilia. My definition is really simple. People feel good when they feel connected to nature. They do better. Um, we all know that we are living in more and more dense cities and we'll have taller and taller buildings, yet we have a deep, innate need to connect to nature. So how are we going to do that? We've always had parks, which are great. But I think we now have a new obligation to connect people closer to nature in the buildings, whether they are uh, whether there are gardens on every single floor or local gardens up in skyscrapers. We will need to find a way. And we also, I think, need to find a way to re-knit the ecosystem, which we have kind of scrubbed and uh, made into a little bit of a monoculture. And uh, the other issue we'll have to plan for is storm resiliency and, uh, and mitigation. And I think these things actually go together. We need more, we need more wetlands that absorb and uh, absorb storm surge. We need to have our roofs collect storm water so we're not, we're not overflowing our sewage treatment systems and pumping raw sewage out into the rivers. These are just things that we, we must do as we, as we mature as a city and, and see how we need to develop a connection to nature in everything that we do. What buildings, what cities, regions, firms uh, do you see as really pushing the envelope on that? Well, I think that uh, that I was really impressed uh, studying what Vancouver was doing. They actually legislate uh, what they call a land lift. And if, if uh, you get rezoned and you get a lot more area, they appraise it before, they appraise it after, and I think something like 80% of that land lift value goes into improving the waterfront, improving the parks. Um, that was one that was impressive because here it's much more uh, a legal battle and those lucky few who get their site rezoned get a windfall and there's a little bit of negotiation, but there's no specific quantifying the financial value. That's one. And mm -hmm. then also in Vancouver, I was amazed at how careful they were in crafting the view quarters and protecting view quarters from key public spaces out to the mountains. Mm -hmm. So when you're in Vancouver, you're in a vibrant city, but you're also looking at this incredibly beautiful mountainscape. And there's something psychologically uh, calming about that when you're in a city, but you look out and you know you could go hiking, skiing, mountain biking, and you can actually see the presence of the mountains. I think that was a uh, that was really interesting, but we're also uh, we're also doing more and more here. I think that we'll get to the point where we have a green area ratio, like we have a floor area ratio, hmm. and every site yields a certain amount of development rights. I think we'll get to the point where we'll have a green area ratio where every site needs to contribute a certain amount of green area.